Now let's solve this uh, fourth order linear differential equation. This is homogeneous constant coefficient. So we're gonna go ahead and assume that the solution form is going to be e to the rt. And by assuming that we uh, know that the characteristic polynomial of this differential equation would be r to the fourth plus one equals to zero. And now we need to find the roots of this characteristic polynomial. So the way we're going to do this is by using a very famous formula called the de, de Moivre's theorem. So let me give you a quick recap of what a de Moivre's theorem is. So we have de Moivre's theorem, which formula that really tells us that if you have a complex number, let's say if z is a complex number, so that's can be written as some a plus b i, or in polar form, you can write this as r uh, cosine theta plus i sine theta. And we know from Euler's identity, this is r e to the i theta. So really z is just equal to that number in complex form. So if v is equal to this, then we can raise both sides to some n power. So z to the n, would simply be equal to, on the right-hand side, you also raise it to the nth power. So you'll have r e to the i theta to the nth power, which can be simplified as r to the n times e to the i n theta. And then by using Euler's identity, you can rewrite this piece right here. You can write that as, so you have r to the n times cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta. So that is what we're going to be using right here. And then from there, we can figure out the roots. So that's the general version of de Moivre's theorem. Let's take a look at what we got here. So let's suppose r is kind of like z. So if I were to subtract one from both sides, I have r to the fourth is equal to negative one. Now, if you write negative one uh, as a complex number, you can write it as negative one plus zero i, it's like that. So if I draw this on the real and the complex plane, so this is our real axis, this is our complex axis. So negative one plus zero i, well, negative one is right here, zero i, that means there is uh, nothing along the complex axis. So you wanna write this number, negative one, in, in a polar form, r e to the i theta. So I wanna write this as r e to the i theta. So we need to figure out what is r and what is theta. So those are the two missing pieces. And then we're free to use this formula that we have on the right-hand side. So here's how we're gonna do this. So negative one is located right here. So now uh, the distance from the center to negative one, that is your r. So in other words, that distance will be one. So we know r is one. Now, what about the theta? Well, the angle starting from the positive x-axis and going all the way around, stopping right here, that theta we know is going to be pi. So then we can simply write negative one in polar form as, so we have r is one, and then e to the i theta, theta would be pi, but that's not all of it. So since um, this can go around in more, revolutions. So we know that we will have to tag along, uh, let's say 2k pi, something like that. So every at every 2 pi, you have another solution that will end up at negative one, where negative one is in the same place. So that's how you're going to write this. The negative one can be represented as e to the i pi plus 2k pi. And k can be valued from 0, 1, two up to three. So it always has to be less than this number right here. So zero, one, two, three. Those are all the roots we're going to get. So then what we really have is r to the fourth is equal to e to the i times, so I forgot to write the parentheses because that's your theta. So it's pi plus two k pi. And then now since we want to solve for r, r is the root we're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and take the fourth root on both sides. So this is how we're gonna solve for r algebraically. 
and this would give us r is equal to e to the i and then for each of these powers you will have pi over 4 plus 2k pi over 4 where k like we said will run from 0 1 2 3 and that's how we're going to get all the roots for r now another thing you want to keep in mind is the complex roots come as conjugate pair so if you know one root you already know the other one so let me show you what i mean by that so let me go ahead and uh, simplify this as well so i can write that as k pi over 2 and now it's easier to work with so if i pick r if i pick k to be 0 so i can get one of the root so r would be equal to e to the i pi over 4 plus k is 0 so pi over 2 expression so this guy will disappear so you'll just have e to the pi over 4 and using Euler's identity this is cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4 and we know what sine and cosine of pi over 4 are so this is going to be uh, 1 over root 2 plus i uh, sine of pi over 4 is also 1 over root 2 so there you have one of the root, but we also know its conjugate pair is another root. So plus and minus of that. So we know two roots. So R1 is this, and so is R2. So R1 and R2, let's call it that way, will be these roots. So I already got two of them. Now, since we we're solving R to the fourth equals to one, we need four roots. So we got two of them already. Now, the next one, let's pick a value for K to be one. So if k is one, we have, so again, going back to the uh, this form right here, that's how we get the roots. So you will have r is equal to e to the i pi over four plus, now we're picking k to be one, so it would be pi over two. So then if you combine the exponents, pi over four plus pi over two, so that would give us e to the i uh, three pi over four. All right, and now using the Euler's identity, this can be written as cosine of 3 pi over 4 plus i sine of 3 pi over 4. And then let's go ahead and uh, find their exact values. So a bit of pre-calculus here. So we know cosine of 3 pi over 4, well, that's in the second quadrant. So cosine is going to be negative. So this will give us negative 1 over root 2 plus sine of 3 pi over 4. That's positive. It's in the second quadrant with the reference angle pi over 4. So you'll have i square root of uh, 1 over root 2. Now, since we know this is one of the complex pair, so call it r3 and also r4, the negative of that. So we got two more roots right here. Since we know complex numbers, they come as a pair conjugate pair now we're ready to write down our solution they're both complex uh, all four are complex conjugate so our solution so using r1 and r2 so if you recall if your solution is some alpha plus and minus beta i if that happens to be a root then your solution of that would be some c1 e to the alpha t cosine of beta t plus c2 e to the alpha t sine of beta t. So that's what we're going to use to rewrite these roots. So for r1 and r2, so we have, so for r1 and r2, we have 1 over square root of 2 plus and minus i 1 over square root of 2. So you can think of as this is your alpha and this is your beta. And then for the next one, uh, R3 and R4, this is your alpha, this is your beta. So we have our four independent solution as follows. So we have y of t is equal to, so C1, so using R1 and R2, e to the alpha t, well, alpha is one over square root of two. So I'll write t over square root of two. Uh, times cosine of beta, that's 1 over square root of 2t, plus, now we write the pair with sine, so c2 e to the t over square root of 2 sine of 
1 over square root of 2t. So that's with R1 and R2. Now using R3 and R4, we'll have C4 e to the, now alpha is negative 1 over root 2. So I'll write t over root 2, cosine of 1 over square root of 2t plus C, uh, sorry, this should be C3. And then here I will have C4, uh, just making them different. e to the um, negative t over square root of 2 sine of 1 over square root of 2t. So there you have your four independent solutions. So this is how you compute uh, solutions to a higher order differential equations if, if the roots happen to be complex or if you're able to write the differential equation in this form, something to a power equals to a number, and that number can be represented as a polar complex number.